Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here. I'm John Furrier, your host in New York City for MongoDB Local. This is their flagship inauguration event of a 20 plus city tour. We're going to go out, to the, take it to the streets where the developers are. Bottoms up, organic, that's the way the market is. We love that. We've got two great guests here. are going to unpack what's going on at Mongo, how to stand up applications, how to run them, how to build them, AI apps, and, and in the modern developer data platform, it's killer. Mindy Lieberman, CIO at MongoDB. So we're going to ask her all the hard questions. And Tara Hernandez, VP of Developer Productivity at MongoDB. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having us. So first Thank of all, you. love your title, CIO, which means you're in charge of a lot of stuff. Developer Productivity, the hottest topic on the planet. It's you know, yet another in a long line of buzzwords around what do you do to ship software? <laughs> I love, so it's all about software. This is what I love about this event. It's not about this, that, analytics, some dashboard. It's about good old fashioned pure software and data coming together. And I think Mongo has really hit a home run here. I was just talking to Dave, the CEO, and I heard the keynote, I wrote a story about it. I think the developer-led data platform is a genius strategy is needed. It's not new at Mongo, this is like, been going on for many years, there's a trajectory, there's economies of scale involved, you have a customer base that's, that is developers, so it's not new, this is a big thing. Now everyone's like, whoa, platforms are hot, hot. Congratulations, well what's your reaction to that? You agree, <laughs> obviously. Well, I, I mean, I think it's safe to say that, you know, Mindy and I kind of represent the practical like aspects of that whole thing, right? You know, Mindy owns, technical operations and all the corp side stuff, which very tightly couples with you know, R&D developer internal tooling and development, and when, you know, when, when the, the challenge came on with, what about this AI thing? You know, Mindy and I sprang into action and we're having all these conversations you know, on both sides of that internal corp yeah. oriented versus internal developer usage. Both of those things on the way towards leading to what's the external yeah. you know, engagement that we're allowed right. to enable through that work. You know, I was joking around, sometimes it's better be lucky than good, or uh, luck is where preparation meets opportunity, right? Uh -huh. it's, I think that that's the latter is where you guys have this platform has been actually tailor-made for what happens, so it's almost, you know, skate to where the puck is going to be. You guys hit it, home run, you're right in line with the trajectory. 100%, I mean, I think it's prescient because when we, when we think about developing software, and you're right, it's all about data, it's about applications on top of data. I mean, I look at it for IT as a portfolio. There's some that is built, there is some that is bought. When you can't go to the market and find things that are fit for purpose, you have to build. And to have a developer platform available, um, and I get good pricing, uh, that, it can't be beat. Well, I want to just make a disclaimer, and, and everyone knows I'm biased. I love data. I've been covering it since 2010, when the Cube started with big data and Hadoop. We saw that the maturation of what was really happening was less about the people selling software mechanisms that had no data experience, the people who had data. But DevOps was, was, the, was the growth. Then DevSecOps. So the question is, will there be a DevSec data ops? So now you have a whole nother level of, because security is a data problem, okay? Dev's a data problem now with the dev platform, and ops is a data opportunity problem. So, or is data just in everything? I mean, I think I'm, it's- I'm kidding about the data sec ops, but, but my point is- Data, okay, data is ubiquitous, um, and you, just, you have to always think about careful ways to manage it, because there is, I mean, data is ubiquitous across the, your entire enterprise. So in fact, one of the most important things that I do as a CIO, I mean, they call it a chief information officer because it's all about the information part. Yep. Right? Um, you have to figure out ways to gather it, to disseminate it, to cleanse it. Um, so it's all about the data. Right, and you know, for, for my developers, you know, when we want to do testing or analysis or you know, other things to help with the customer engagement, we have to be mindful of how are we managing the customer data and how do we build the guardrails to make sure the developers aren't looking at stuff they're not supposed to <laughs> and vice versa when we're yeah. talking, you know, to make sure that our data is also saved in a, in, a, in a safe way without getting in the way. And that's what DevSecOps yeah. is. That idea of shift left is interesting 
not because it's making the developers more acutely aware of security, that, I mean, that's a little part of it, but it's that we ideally have created a platform where they don't have to worry about it, but they get the benefit of the protections that were built in to how they do their development. I'm glad you brought that up because this is exactly what I've been saying and seeing, and this is what I hear here at the conference, is that the developer, want, they want easy. They want to have the guardrails. We saw that in security. That was, yeah. That's the security guardrails. Security ops is doing great right now. There's love between dev and sec right now. Data is an unknown. There's no real hatred for data because everyone loves data, but it's new. It's a new way to program in the app. So the ops side of it gets interesting. I mean, like, I just see, I, I just see something where I'm a developer. I would be like, compliance, no. I got to do all, no, I don't want to do it. I just want to write my code. I want to build my app. That's the value of a platform. When you can have one solution that everybody needs, uh, those are killer, killer features. And SEC um, is certainly one of those. And you know, and it comes back, honestly, you think about DevOps, you know, if you ever talk to Jez Humble, he says DevOps is a community of practice, right? It's not a role, it's not a job description, <laughs> right? It's, it's an approach, it's a culture. Yes. And so, you know, one of the things around Mongo, like Mongo is a developer tools company at the end yeah. of the day, right? So our customers are developers. We use it internally, dog food, making yeah. sure that we take advantage of that opportunity. Cultural aspect also goes into how we think about things like security and yeah. compliance. You know, I'm on the R&D side, Mandy's over yeah. on TechOps, we talk very closely. We talk a lot. The, the, <laughs> the security yeah. application folks on, when the product development teams were all part of these discussions because we have to be able to have a common language, common understanding, so that we can move, not necessarily yeah. in lockstep, but collaboratively, yeah. so that we can understand where are we hitting these edge cases that we need to, like either Mindy needs to boost them up or maybe my team needs to boost them up so that those guardrails yeah. are not just created, but curated in a way that, uh, that has the developer mindset thinking that security isn't just people telling us no. Yeah. Right, yeah. that way lies death, and yeah. it's, it's, you know, in this yeah. day and age when things go so quickly, you can't go slow. Well, that's a, well the culture is a great point because everything revolves around culture. The team formation, the discipline, the practices, the, uh, the, the empathy and the, and the compassion of your teammates, but more importantly, speed. Remember, oh. agility and speed has been a hallmark of DevOps. And so now, with AI, that's only going to get faster, but that could get worse too. You could go off the rails. 100%, it's a Goldilocks problem. You move too slow, and you haven't capitalized on the opportunity. You move too fast, and you become a headline. So you have to find the just right. Um, and that's, that's where there's a really yeah. good partnership across MongoDB, Tara and I work very closely together. Well, I'm really glad you guys came out because I've been riffing hard on this all week and then I've been ranting on my podcast around the role of ops and operationalizing the infrastructure. Amazon's got Bedrock, Microsoft's got OpenAI and all this other stuff. So a lot of people saying, look at, run your AI on here. Then you got the developers saying, I just want to code. And they're still in discovery mode. They're trying to yep. figure out what I'm going to work on, who I want to hang out with, or which culture I want to align with. And open source has proven that the developers are driving the culture the bus, they're driving that bus. So the question is, what is the good enough operations to enable and not foreclose developers from being curious, playful, and experimenting on the code? Well, you want to take this one? I'm going to take this one <laughs> because this one. Um, to how part of our strategy, aside from providing uh, developer tooling for us to ex experiment and find out what works versus what's hype, um, Part of that is collaboration and a very light touch at coordination. So basically, we are saying yes to safe cases where we are trying to shorten the process to make sure that people can get their hands on, yeah. on things um, early and often and just we test and learn yeah. and then expand. Right, and, and one of the beautiful things about MongoDB that I love it's one of the reasons I came, is that MongoDB is based on open source technology at its heart. Yeah. You know, you can go grab the community build, you can go to GitHub and you can grab the source, right? So one of the first things we said is, you know, took a quick pass and like, you want to play yeah. with ChatGPT? Point it at the public repos. Because the guardrail is, it's already public, yeah, right? Exactly. The internal stuff, we can work on in, as fast as we can, but there's no reason that we can't have a reasonable set of, you know, yeah. policies to get started. That, that's right, and then we, we get to yes, use case by use case. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I always say never bet against open source, especially in this day and age, because oh, amen. Never. You know, open source is now the software industry. It used to be a community thing. Now it's the communities, plural. And I think open source is now, I mean, anything done that's proprietary is either under the covers or deep in some product differentiation that's not impacting 
much other than having a feature. So open wins. You look at open source, the, the fastest innovation is going on right now with AI and open source. You're seeing the proprietary foundation models getting replicated and decimated literally in open source. In what, three months, Tara? Three months? Or if that. Or if that, yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> faster models, okay, so all the carbon footprint issues. Thin, thin code, nice, clean, fast, all done in the open. That's going to trump everything. Open source ultimately always wins. On the journey though, we are hyper-conscious of protecting customer data. Yeah. So right, and that's, and that's the difference between the pure open source yeah. environment and the enterprise encapsulation of it, right? It's our responsibility to yeah. understand those differences. But you know, to your point, you know, if anybody who doesn't understand the level of influence and power that yeah. you know, the Linux Foundation, the Apache Foundation, the, the, you know, those very key open source yeah. foundations have in the, over the industry as a whole, I mean, they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna get hammered. I mean, I, I hate to say this, but I'm old, but I remember when I was growing up in the computer industry, they were standards bodies. IEEE, IETF, W3C, you know, W3C yep. and they were stewards of that old proprietary, and I won't say watchdogs as much as they were just transitioning and building the open source culture. The thing about today, there is no standards bodies anymore because a lot of the physical layer stuff's done. At the logical layer, it's the open source, it's the developers. They, no vendor can say, we're the winner. If the developers don't like it, they're not going to use it, number one. So software's going to get easier to make, I shouldn't say that, it's going to be easier to make software and the winners will emerge, but having data is not going to be as easy. So the data is the value, the, the software is the mechanism, okay? The, so now you have this dynamic where a lot of people I talk to are like, hey, I love all this stuff, but anyone can, like, I can spin up something that I go to open source and I can get Reddit. Reddit's going down, I might as well replicate Reddit, but I don't have the data. Okay? Yeah, I mean the data is your business, right? Whatever it is that you do, that you, the, ultimately the data is your business. And That's so right. the, the, the manipulation and management of that data and in the industries where it matters how carefully you, you, you know, cherish it and protect it with the, the software offerings that are engaged I mean, in it. Yeah, it's not too reductionist to say that the function of an IT department is to get the right data in front of the right eyes yeah. at the right time. And the, you know, the UI is the delivery vehicle. Yeah. But the data is the real jewel. You know, I never said, I've said on theCUBE, Dave Vellante and I have said, there'll never be another Red Hat. I said that, okay? Because it's going to be hard to replicate what Red Hat did. We look at what's going on in open source right now, what Red Hat was to the Linux kernel, you can start to see why the data platform makes so much sense. You can go play in the open, that's where community is, that's where you can see the code, but when you want to run things and actually ride the, the wave and build, a lot of things are taken care of because, you know, think about it, if I'm a developer, when I go to the airport, I, want to, I don't want to be, I want to be in TSA pre, okay? I don't want to be in the other lane, okay? Yeah. I want to be in the, I don't want to take my shoes off, I want to go right through. Right. Okay, that to me is like the data platform. It, 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 it is the model, right? And you think about a developer gets in there and, and yeah. uh, you know, they grab, like I said, they grab the community build, they got it running on their laptop and they're doing their thing, and now they're telling their CEO yeah. and the CFO, it's like, this is what we want to do, and the CFO says, well, I don't want to hire 30 SREs, so we're going to throw that thing into Atlas, you know, and take advantage yeah. of it. Not that it's SRE free, but it is definitely yeah. SRE reduced, right? Well, it comes and down to switching costs, right? The yeah. optionality fact, this is where I love your role coming together because I see this very clearly. You got to have the operational understanding of what impact is. Costs, yep. and also switching costs. And then you factor in culture, it's an easy path to say yes. That's why I have both the best and the worst job in the company. <laughs> yes, same. All right, what's the coolest thing you're working on right now? Oh, um, I'd say- Sandbox? Uh, uh, well, there are a couple of yeah. really cool things. Um, we are working on the uh, enabling the consumption um, workload centrism of our business. I mean, what is a workload and how do we take it from a concept into something yeah. that we can use to run and sell our business and forecast our business, do all the things that you yeah. would normally do um, with, with, your op, with your ops teams. The, uh, the other really cool thing is the one that Tara and I work on all the time, which is uh, Gen AI. And how do you use those innovations to safely, sanely um, juice up your operations? Because the promise is amazing. Yeah. The potential is massive. Uh, 
And what's your, what's your vision on the impact on AI? Obviously, a lot of heavy lifting can be differentiated away, but also could accelerate value too, don't you think? It's going to accelerate value. I mean, the most precious commodity is the brain of your smart, of your smart individuals. If we can make easy things easier, if we can save time, yeah. that will return dividends to the organization in terms of productivity. And I, and I think it's interesting because you, you hear different like sort of doomsayer sort of conversations like, oh, AI is going to cost all these jobs. And I would say, well, possibly. But I think a company that like looks at AI as a way to say, well, I'm going to cut my support organization by 70%, it's probably not really thinking about it, right? Yeah. Because AI is really not AI. We really want to talk about you know, pattern learning, machine learning. It's, it's yeah. about up-leveling, right? Yeah. Up more than replacement. A developer uses AI to write code, the AI is not going to debug the code when the customer picks the phone and says, yeah. hey, I've given you a whole lot of money for my support contracts and you were giving me a chat bot? No, that's yeah. great, that's not going to well, happen. I mean, when it changes functionality like that, that's, that's, a, that's a shift, that's a structural shift. And I heard the same thing when the web came. That's a kid's toy, it's like, a, no, that was the PC. The web was, oh, it's so slow, it's a terrible user interface. Hey, that 14.4 modem, oh, man. Oh my God, it's so bad. <laughs> No, but you're absolutely right. It's going to shift the way people staff. About It's going to shift how people write code, how people debug code, how people deploy code. Right. But you're still going to need the same number of people. They may be doing different, different things. That, exactly. That are higher up yeah. in the stack that require more, more cognitive ability. So I love the developer platform. Let's circle back now to developer productivity because right now that's kind of the topic that's on the table. There's a lot of supply chain issues with software, S-bombs, we've, we've had that conversation before, our chatbots got that indexed heavily, I'll ask that question. But you take care of all those like under the covers, like paper cuts that a developer would look at and say, I don't want to get involved in that. This, like I said, they went through the security problem the same way. Give them the guardrails, thank you very much. How does AI and how does the Atlas and the Mongo data platform make developers more productive? How would you answer that question? Well, there's a couple of things that you know Dave and, and Mark and Zahir were talking about earlier today. There's you know there's the aspect of uh, taking a set of developers who are new to Document DB style NoSQL style databases, uh, speed of onboarding, right? To to be able to get the assistance to help transition your mental model from a SQL base to a NoSQL base. Um, there's uh, testability. It's like, hey, I'm writing a bunch of functions and I want to be able to get you know, those functions testable as fast as possible, <laughs> right? Up-leveling that. Or I've changed things. Where are all the places the tests need to be updated or, or run, right? Kind yeah. of taking that idea of dependency management and up-leveling yeah. it. But, and even beyond that, security, what's the number one thing people complain about as developers of security right now? It's like, we got to produce these S-bombs and we have to look at all these CVEs. 95% of the CVEs don't have a patch or they're not critical, they're just noise, and now you're having to address them. AI around that to tell you what you actually have to care about in a yeah. more comprehensive way, that's going to reduce the cognitive load, right? Yeah. I think reducing cognitive load in order to enable velocity is going to be kind of the thematic benefit that we're going to see. Coding, testing, yeah. security, compli compliance, all those things are going to benefit. And also one of the things that's come out of the AI push is that the notification um, bombing. How many notifications are we getting um, That's and right. That the are signal firing noise. off. Yeah. Yeah. Separating wheat from chaff. Yes. Because there's a lot of chaff out there. <laughs> well, you're in the middle of all the operational stuff. So I was making a riff early. I want to get your reaction on. When Amazon came out, it was EC2, S3, SQS, basic primitives. And I remember when EC2 had no custom domains. The URLs were this long. But it was great. I loved it. Okay. It was good enough. I can I can do my local host. And I can put it in the cloud and swipe the credit card. That was good enough. Now it got better. But all was going on now is the, the Gen 1 SaaS was happening. I see the same movie going on here in kind of a way where the focus is what's the good enough picture ops wise and how do I get coding to take advantage of the benefits of the new environment, which is agility, speed, developer assistance, whether it's uh, humans plus AI. That's, that's, that's what everyone wants right now. Um, and, and that is the challenge of the job. Right. I mean, you also have to remember that expectations have shifted too. What would have flown, what would have been good enough five years ago, is not good enough any longer. Um, and so you have yeah. to know, first of all, what problem you're solving always, and then know what is the best way to solve that problem. What is a good enough solution? Yeah, in, in a way, I, I was thinking about this recently too. You think about you know, going back to Martin Fowler going on top of the mountain and coming back down with the, <laughs> the, the tablets of agile methodology, right? <laughs> and you think about like, okay, and you talk about the state of DevOps report, what's the turnaround time, what does it make to be elite? But, 
but the complexity of what it means to run distributed systems in cloud, it's like it, it actually, it's increasing that yeah. cycle time. So in a way I'm looking at these AI up leveling is actually gets us back to where we were before we made things this much more complicated. So it's actually taking something really complicated and then simplifying yeah. it down again maybe yeah. in, in one way. In, in one but, way. And it's also about iteration. Because again, what is good enough for a start may, may not be good enough over time. And so IT departments are also have to go hardcore agile because they are developers as well. And they had to yeah. use DevOps and agile methodologies. And, and going back to what you were saying around open source, I mean, I'd love to, like, I don't think MongoDB, I'm speaking for Dave here for a second, but I don't think we want to get in the business of making MongoDB specific models, right? And so yeah. that idea of where can we share models as yeah. an industry, around things like DevOps or DevSecOps yeah. or DevSec Beta Ops, right? Well, if you're a platform, as you know, enabling value is what you do. That yep. ecosystem picks it up, open source will pick it up, and, and you're in, if you're in an inflection point now, the three business model tried and true method was reduce the time it takes to do something, make it go faster, make it easy to use. I mean, like, like that's what you got to do. Like, those are like basic principles. Yeah, 100%, which is why we're building a lot of custom tooling, particularly in our move to go for workload centrism, there aren't tools in the market. <laughs> the market is catching up, so we're building our own, and uh, we've got well, a really good database platform to use. Yeah. Well, we're getting the hook here. We went way over. We, this is a great conversation. <laughs> Glad we got it on video. Final word, both of you, please share the vision of this event, the folks watching who aren't here, beginning of a 20-something city tour, What's this Mongo local about? What's the core bumper sticker? How would you describe what's happening right now? I you start, you're the C. Oh, oh, <laughs> you're, you're looking for wisdom. Um, we've got the best data development platform out there. We love our developers. We are going to make, uh, just watch this space. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, this is all about enabling, right? It's yeah. about how do we help you get what yeah. you need to get done in either enterprise, startup, you know, basic entrepreneurship, like we want to be here for those developers. All great, Mindy, great conversation. Tara, great conversation. Coming together, operational and devs, productivity. Thanks for coming on. Live from theCUBE coverage here in New York City from Mongo Local. We'll be right back. I'm John Furrier, your host. Stay with us. Got a great set of guests coming up next. <laughs>